connection to the syllabus and schedule. So let's get started. Okay, Chemistry 3111, welcome to our summer class. And our lectures are going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 to 4.30 p.m. So it's kind of a bummer that we have to have lecture on Friday afternoon, but such as it is, uh, and we're going to move forward with it. So one thing I'll address right away is that if you tally up the number of hours that I have set aside for this class, meaning three and a half hours for lecture three times a week uh, over eight weeks, you'll quickly notice that I have way more time allotted for the summer course than I do for the spring and fall course. So uh, let me get that out of the way um, immediately. First thing is that the reason I have, I have way too much time booked for lectures, which should only go about two hours uh, per day, so why do I have almost double that? It's so that we can take breaks if we need to. And usually it might, you know, I get tired of talking and I have to take a short break at some point. Um, so that's number one. And um, yeah, I guess that would be the best, the best reason is so that we have time to take breaks here and there. Um, and then if you factor in the quizzes that we write in class uh, during the spring and fall semester, that vacuums up even more time, which would shorten the lectures to about two hours. Um, per day, maybe even less than that. And so again, I'm never going to lecture probably till 430. OK, I'll always end class significantly, significantly before that. However, I like to just have the freedom to take breaks if we need to uh, and stuff like that. All right, so um, first of all, uh, I have a little letter here at the beginning of the syllabus that explains that we're going to be meeting via Microsoft Teams from today until July 7th. And because we're meeting by teams, you need to have a couple things at your disposal. First of all, of course, you need a reliable internet connection. And that's not just for participating in lectures, but it's also so that you can write quizzes because most of the quizzes I have um, set up using Respondus Lockdown Browser and Respondus Monitor. And I think that most students are familiar with that. Another thing you need access to is a printer or some way of writing on a PDF so that if I ask you to complete something, uh, a handwritten assignment, that you're able to do that and email that to me, or sorry, you'd actually submit it to Canvas, and that way I can take a look at that. And since all of you have passed Organic Chemistry 1, I know, that, I know that's one thing that everybody in, uh, has in common, you know why I want you to do handwritten things sometimes. It's because the only way to master the content in Organic Chemistry is to be able to draw curved arrows and we look at many mechanisms in this course, so it might be um, uh, or it's pertinent for me to ask you to draw a few mechanisms throughout the course and for me to grade those. All right, so that's the real difference between taking the class, you know, remotely versus us being in person. I kind of covered all that there. The rest is things that you're probably used to because I know that most of you, not everybody, but I know that most of you took Organic Chemistry 1 with me or Dr. Anderson. And, um, you know, this blurb here where it says in this class, you need to spend 12 to 18 hours a week outside of the class. That's for the 16 week class. OK, so you can essentially double it or almost double it for the summer course. And if you're thinking, well, baby, that's a lot of time. Well, I'd say, yeah, you're right. It is a lot of time. And everybody who's hearing the sound of my voice, unlike my organic one students, everybody that's hearing my voice is a seasoned veteran at this point and so you know what it takes to be successful in organic chemistry it takes a big time commitment and so um not only that but the quizzes are cumulative so what we've learned in chapter 12 that could show up on a chapter 14 quiz or sorry chapter 16 let's say so everything is going to be additive throughout this course uh, if you need to contact me, so one thing we can remove from the syllabus is my phone number because they took it out of my office. I don't have a phone anymore. Dr. Diaz and I have no phone in the office now. Um, in fact, they removed them from all of the offices. Uh, but you can always contact me by email. Do not use the messaging feature on Canvas. That thing is junk. Uh, just use your email and I will do my best to answer you within 24 hours. If you need to speak to me in person, you can always um, chat with me on Microsoft Teams. We can make an appointment and I can talk to you and answer any questions, you know, that you um, that you have. So I'm happy and I'm always happy to do that. I love meeting with my students and talking with them. Course outcomes, you know, there's nothing really new here for anybody who's passed organic chemistry one. The only thing that I would say is really new in this class is you're going to be doing a lot of multi-step synthesis. Okay, It's a lot of synthesis. So if you like the whole idea of memorizing reactions 
and you know learning mechanisms and learning how to put those reactions together to make compounds and maybe that wasn't what you like but anyhow i'm just going to level with you that's mostly what organic chemistry too is about are there things that are not completely synthesis related sure we talk about aromaticity and we talk about polymers and plastics and that kind of stuff but most of it is going to be organic synthesis um, the textbook, if you took Organic Chemistry um, 1 with me or Dr. Anderson, it's the same textbook, David Klein, the fourth edition. Really great textbook. And even better than that, if you know, you know, it's Dr. Klein's Solutions Manual, which I highly recommend that everybody purchase for $15 to the point that I would say it would be difficult to pass the class without it. Not impossible, but I've taught this class for a long time, and I would say it would be very, very difficult to pass the course without the solutions manual. Thumbs up. Anybody like the solutions manual from Organic One? Anybody find it helpful? Anybody have a thumbs up? Yeah, see? Yeah, somebody wrote in the chat. Love it. Yeah. The reason why students like it is, and this is for people who have never used it before, it's not just a uh, answer guide. It's not just an answer key. It gives you the actual guided solution. So it's Dr. Klein himself that wrote the book. And so he did a really good job. Molecular models, you don't need to have those as well as an ACS study guide, not required. You can uh, buy an ACS study guide if you want. I put a link here. You can buy molecular models if you want. Um, I'll leave that up to you to decide whether you want to do that. The only thing I would say about the ACS study guide is I always have a few students who are med school minded or dental school minded or maybe they want to be a PA or something like that. And so they do have a, a standardized exam with organic chemistry in their future. And if you are fall under that umbrella, I would recommend buying an ACS organic uh, chemistry study guide. Let's say you decide to write the MCAT a year from now. Are you going to remember everything that you learned in organic too? Probably not. And so this would be a great review um, for that. Next thing is Canvas. So we use Canvas for all of our announcements and assignments and everything. And I think that most people who are hearing the sound of my voice are familiar with Canvas. If you're not, this is what our class's Canvas shell looks like. This isn't the instructor view. And unfortunately for me, if I switch over to student view, so this is what you guys see, um, it doesn't really work that well for me. But um, for those of you who have never had me as an instructor before, uh, if you go under chapter 11, which is where we're gonna start today, you can see that I have the lecture notes posted, the homework assignment is there. Quiz 11, which we're going to talk about more on Wednesday, is posted. It's not open for a while. It's not open until the 21st. Um, but the, again, the homework is there. And then um, if you want to know, like, what practice problems should I do from the textbook? I have gone through the textbook and handpicked all the problems that I think are most pertinent. And how many, and for those of you who have had me as an instructor before, what percentage of these problems do I think you should do in order to master the content? Anybody want to comment on that in the chat? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh, Maria put a thousand percent. I agree, Maria. OK, I want to do all of the problems. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And that's not me trying to sound like a meanie or anything like that. It's just the reality. You want to do all of those problems. All right. So that's that. Um, also, oops, that's kind of a hiccup here. Also, for anybody um, and I know that most of you have taken organic chemistry at UCCS, but I know there's a few of you who haven't. And if you haven't, and you're unfamiliar with the Wiley Plus platform, which is where we do our homework, um, there's a little introduction to Wiley Plus. You see it down here. I have it all open all the way until July 7th. And so if you've never used that platform before, you could go in. There's just a few short exercises that teach you how to use the drawing tool and how to enter answers and all those kinds of things. So I highly recommend that if you've never used it before or if you're rusty, you know, you haven't used it in a while then feel free to go in and, and use that anytime throughout the semester. You can also see I have the schedule and syllabus posted here, all kinds of interesting things. I don't have every chapter posted yet. I have the first three ready to go and I'll publish them as we get um, as we get um, further ahead. Um, let's not worry about the ACS final today. We'll talk about that more once we get closer to it. So let's go back here. So um, as far as your assignment grades, um, most of your grades are going to come from the quizzes, and we have 13 quizzes. I'll drop your lowest score. Uh, you get 70% of your grade from the quizzes, only 20% from the final, and then the homework is 10%. Um, I have the approximate grade scale here. 
And then, you know, a big point of contention sometimes with some people is the lowest score. So I will drop your lowest score. Now, even though um, these quizzes will be given remotely, that doesn't mean I can give you an eternity to write them. And the rationale behind that is because my students will want to see their results. And so I like to release the quizzes so that everybody can see, you know, what they got correct or if they missed a problem or something. And so um, if you can't complete a quiz in time, I'm going to give you a zero on that quiz. However, if you write all the quizzes and you get a zero on one, that would be your dropped score. Anything beyond that is going to be included in your grade. There's no extra credit. You know, I'll have students who come to me and say, can I write a paper at the end? Of Absolutely not. Um, do not lobby for a grade that usually goes, you know, doesn't work very well um, doing that. So um, yeah, so homework assignments. If you miss a homework assignments due date, you can submit it late, but you will get a score reduction of 50%. Um, no makeup quizzes are given. I went over the whole shebang about quizzes and everything. Online classroom, I never have any problems with my students in the online classroom. They're usually just fantastic, especially students who are taking organic chemistry too. They're usually pretty driven. Uh, the census date, I have to double check this to see if it's the 22nd or the 19th. I'm gonna double check with Dr. Anderson and post an announcement about that. The next thing is about withdrawing from the lecture. This is something that we used to do is allow students to withdraw from the lecture and then remain in the lab. However, we're making changes to that. And so this is not um, a part of the syllabus anymore. So I'm going to remove this probably tonight or tomorrow morning and repost this. So just hear ye, hear ye, can, this doesn't apply anymore. And as far as the course evaluation in Science Center and all that kind of stuff, um, we'll worry about that. Um, I mean, you can read that if that applies to you. The Science Center summer hours, I'm not sure what their summer hours. I, could, I mean, you could just do a quick Google search and even see if they are open. Um, uh, this summer. I'm actually not 100% sure. Nobody told me. Um, anyhow, so let's take a quick look at our schedule. And our schedule looks something like this. So today is May 15th, and we are here, and we are going to work on chapter 11, which is a pretty short chapter. So that will play in our favor for today. Um, and then on Wednesday, we're going to get into the chapter on alcohols and phenols. So this will be new chemistry to everybody. And uh, yeah, from there we move into a whole bunch of different chapters. So you can see there's a lot of content covered in this class. And then it's not until the very end of the class, um, probably here where we get into carbohydrates, amino acids, polymers. Um, these two sections here, these would fall under the umbrella of biochemistry because uh, most of the students taking this class will follow up with biochemistry. And then we do a short section on polymers um, towards the end, very short section of polymers. Anyhow, so that's a little bit about that. Let me go back here and let me find my lecture notes. And we'll go back here. There we go. So, all right.